When it comes to analysing development, it's important to understand where growth and development can come from for a developing country. We've talked about lots of domestic factors that can contribute to development, yes, and a lot of those can lead to long-run development outcomes. Let's now isolate the long-run growth factors that are just as fundamental to development as some of the short-run impacts on growth are as well. So when we consider long-run growth impacts and how they can foster through to development, what we're really looking at is increasing the quantity and or the quality of factors of production available in the developing country. If that happens, that's fantastic. It's fantastic because it leads to potential growth in the economy. It can lead to higher incomes if these things happen. It can lead to fiscal dividends and high profits, all the same things, all the same benefits we get from growth. But also it means that development outcomes and growth outcomes can be achieved not just in the short run, but over a long, long period of time. Great ways to promote sustainable economic development. So, let's isolate our factors of production. I put CELL on there, you should probably all be aware of my famous acronyms like CELL. Um, we're going to basically go through our factors of production and see whether developing countries can increase the quantity and or the quality of them. Let's take land, okay, or natural factors that can stimulate growth and development in developing countries. Well, it's very hard for a country to incre increase the quantity of its land. A lot of countries have tried by looking at um, artificial land, so building artificial kind of islands or uh, trying to find ways to um, be more efficient with the use of land. But actually, probably the better way to increase um, land or improve land as a factor of production is to improve the quality of land. And that can be looking at fertilization, so finding good fertilization techniques um, to get more out of the soil and the land you have. Using better agricultural methods to ensure that you can extract as much as possible from the earth. Um, and also building upwards instead of building horizontal or sideways. Building upwards is a very good way of using space. Look at Singapore, look at Hong Kong, look at Japan, who have all struggled with the quantity of land available, but have still managed to grow and develop by building upwards. So uh, interesting ways of increasing and improving the quality of land. What about human capital, the, the quality of, the quantity and quality of, of labour in the, in the developing countries? Well again, one way is to increase the quantity of labour, and by doing that, find a way to increase your population. Maybe that's through immigration, maybe that's through restricting birth controls or whatever you might have in your economy. But we already know that one major constraint to economic development are high birth rates in developing countries. So do you really want to mess around with the size of your population and increase it even more? Risky, unlikely. So again, developing countries should really focus on the quality of their labour if they're looking at long-run potential growth. And how can they do that? Well, improve health and education in those, in those economies. Education, of course, to provide greater skills. Health, to ensure that productivity can stay high, to ensure that workers can keep working for a long period of time uh, before succumbing to disease and ill health. And also, to make sure that the unemployed and the underemployed can actually find work and be productive uh, supply vocational training schemes to get people in work in areas where you need these jobs to be filled. So maybe that's in manufacturing, maybe that's in more of the kind of higher tech kind of industries in developing countries rather than in agriculture. But also those that have been out of the workforce for a long time or those that have been underemployed and are lacking skills, retrain them. Retrain them so that they're ready for the modern world, they're ready to fill jobs that require certain skills they may have lost or they might not have gained. What about capital? Capital and technology, fundamental, fundamental for long-run development. So again, what do we mean by capital? Well, we're looking at things like you know, vehicles, we're looking at factory buildings, we're looking at uh, tractors and agricultural machinery. Um, all these things constitute capital, so you find a way to increase the quantity of capital is absolutely fine. However, there are major issues with trying to increase the level of your capital stock. Um, one of the major problems that developing countries actually run into in trying to increase capital certainly is funding and more than that it comes down to savings and investment. So not just funding in terms of you know, the government having to find a way to fund this but actually it's a case of can private firms or individuals themselves fund it? Well we may argue no they can't because there is a lack of savings in the economy and therefore there is a lack of funds available um, to actually plough money into the investment in capital. 
What about improving technology? Well, that's important as well. There needs to be ways in which technology can be improved to increase productivity, especially in agriculture where um, production is really dominated in the economy. So um, if that means uh, improving the technology of uh, machines that can extract raw materials from the ground, then do it. If it means improving the machinery to uh, process raw materials and to convert them into, into goods and services, then do it. You, know, you need to find a way of improving technology to move away from dualism as well. And institutional factors. We all understand that banking, a good banking system is important, a good legal system is important, and also a good healthcare and education system is important with good infrastructure as the backbone of the economy. So these are all fundamental long-term factors that will increase growth, that will stimulate growth in a developing economy, but crucially will be sustainable modes of growth and development for a developing country. So it's unlikely we ask a direct question about these factors, but to use them in an essay and to show on a diagram the benefits of it by increasing long run aggregate supply and all the benefits that come about with that, and linking this to sustainability and long term growth and development is a good thing to do in any essay that comes up on development. Thanks for watching. See you all next time.